Hey guys, welcome to another segment of Bald Eagle Fishing Adventures. Uh, my name is Gabriel, my wife Michelle is, is manning the uh, video camera, and uh, as you can tell, we're not fishing today. Today I'm doing something else that I really enjoy doing, and that's cooking. So a couple weeks ago, we were out at Bodega Bay and uh, picked up some really nice rockfish. I have a video on that. If you haven't seen the video, if you want to get a chance and uh, head over there and uh, check it out, that'd be great. Um, and with any of these videos, um, you can hit that subscribe button, the like button, and the little dingling uh, yellow jobby that'll get you with all the new videos that are coming out. Anyways, we're going to have some fun. We're going to cook up some fish. And uh, matter of fact, if I didn't mention it, we're going to be deep frying these uh, rockfish fillets. So let's get started. first uh, we're gonna go ahead and use up some uh, about maybe a teaspoon or so of some salt here and eh, maybe a little bit more okay so we got some there then we're gonna put some in this uh, Ziploc bag I love the Ziploc bags um, and I'll show you why here in a minute when we go to put the fish in here so same thing here we're gonna use up about oh, I don't know maybe a teaspoon or a little over a teaspoon of salt as well I always just kind of kind of go by look and yeah maybe a little bit more let's get a little bit more here yeah I think that's what I'm looking for that looks good there too okay so we got that taken care of so now <clears throat> flour so we're gonna use I like to use about three quarters three quarters of a cup of flour so there's one, this is a quarter cup anyways, that each one of these. Here's two, and here's three going into the bowl. And then in here, we're gonna use about a half cup. So we'll get one in there, and we'll get our second one in here too. Okay, so, and this is gonna make, meh, I would say anywhere from six fillets, six rockfish fillets, um, probably on up to 10, maybe even 12 you could do. I would say maybe 10, uh, anywhere between there. I think I have eight uh, rockfish fillets that we're gonna be actually cooking today. So anyways, um, that's, uh, that's it on the flour. Let's close this up. Do a pinch at a time, kind of give it a little seasoning there. I'm gonna, yeah, that's, you know what? Actually, I like it. Let's. Okay. So, whoop, 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 whoop. Careful. So let's. Uh, that's about maybe about the amount of pepper I put on that, and then I kind of do the same thing with the bag. I like to put a little bit inside here as well. Um, yeah. Again, this is all to taste. You guys can figure out whatever works for you. Most of you might do your own, you know, deep frying of your fish as it is. I'm just, if there's something here that I'm doing that you go, wow, didn't think of that, try it. Give it a shot in your, uh, in, in the way that you uh, do your uh, rockfish or uh, any fish that you uh, deep fry. Um, okay, so we've got that in. Now, this is really, I like a little heat to, to my deep fry uh, with, as far as uh, to the batter. So I put a little cayenne pepper in there. Um, and again, this is kind of a season to taste thing. Uh, you guys can leave this out if you want. Um, I think it 
I think it enhances it a little bit, to be honest. So I just kind of give it a few little taps like this. Why don't you bring the camera on mm -hmm. over? And, uh, you know, we just give it a dusting over it like that. And then I do it in the bag here as well. Okay, so we put a little bit, you know, hey, there's something like that. Okay, so there we go. Now we got that in for good measure. All right, now the real star of the show when it comes to the seasonings, this puppy right here. So Old Bay is my go-to. I use Old Bay in just about every seafood dish that I make up. Um, even when I do, when we do Dungeness Crab, I'll put it in uh, into the, the uh, boiling water uh, where the crabs go into, and I think it just adds such a great flavor. So this in our household is a staple. Anyways, so with that, I am going to use a heaping, uh, maybe even a tablespoon of this in the bowl and in the bag. So let's get this thing opened up. All right, so. I mean, that, that's about what I'm going to dump in. So I'd say that's probably a good tablespoon, maybe even a little bit more. Um, put that in there. This is one of those. And again, you can adjust it however you like for your flavor. But uh, I, I, I really like this. I think it just adds such a great flavor to it. All right. So we're done there. That took care of that. Now, let's get this stuff out of the way. Okay. So now... I've got my dry ingredients here. This, I'm going to give the little shaky bakey over here. So I always like doing it over the sink because uh, I have a tendency of being messy. At least that's what I'm told by my wife. So, I no hate, way. I hate when this stuff flies everywhere. So just a little side of caution. So I get it all kind of mixed through, make it all pretty and everything. All right. So there, that's good enough. Now, let's get the rockfish. Right. Okay, so here's our rockfish fillet. paper towels because it's really important with rockfish fillets or anything that you're going to deep fry really um, you want the fillets when you go to start putting into the uh, dry mixture and then into the batter and stuff I like to when I'm going into the dry mixture I want these fillets fairly dry so I'm gonna rip up a few of these things here that's good that'll work I'll rip as I go all right now if I can get all my thumbs to work correctly, we'll be able to get this out of the saran wrap. <laughs> so when I vacuum seal my fish, um, I like to take care of you know any of this precious food as best as I can. So when we catch our rockfish, um, immediately you know everything is clean, filleted, and um, and then I like to you know portion out all of the rockfish fillets and uh, saran wrap it and then put it into the vacuum seal bag and into the freezer it goes. That way there I can keep the meat pristine um, for a very long period of time. Actually, I think it'll hold a great flavor up to a good couple of months. After two months, yeah, it's it starts not uh, being as fresh tasting. But uh, one thing that I do when I go fishing, I just take what I need. Uh, you know, I, I know limits are great, I know that you know, that's, everybody goes out and it's, it's the big deal of, oh, you got to get the limits, you know, and I, I'm just not that way. I just need what I need. And I feel that if you take more than what you need, it's kind of a waste uh, if it's not tasting really good and you're holding on to it for too long. So anyway, enough of that. So, okay, let's take these fillets. So I thought I had said, let's see, was it eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I was in the middle. Okay. So we got seven fillets here. But like I said, this mixture that I'm doing, six to six to ten rockfish fillets would be perfect. Let me get these things really nice and dried up. Okay, so. That's beautiful. Now, what I like to do is if these fillets are a little on the bigger side, you could 
you know, theoretically just go ahead and cook that whole thing, but I will actually cut these bigger ones in half. So something like that, that's, that's a nice size right there. Um, and then like these little bit smaller ones, these I'll just leave whole. So, oh, and these things are gonna cook up so, so good. So anyways, do that. They taste really good when they're fresh. Oh yes, they do. Oh, oh there was eight. You know what? Look at that. This it was hiding. One, this one was hiding. It was piggybacking the other one. Okay, that was a really tiny little rockfish, but oh, still so good. You know, good things, good things. So, anyways, I thank God for all of our wonderful, precious seafood out there. It's awesome. Anyways, so. Throughout the travels of, of doing, you know, fishing and cooking and all that good stuff, I've learned a few tricks here and there, and a lot of it just from other wonderful people. So, hey, if you guys got any comments or ideas of what you do and um, how you prepare your fish for deep frying, um, please let me know. Send me, uh, send me some remarks on that. I, 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 it's how we learn, isn't it? Um, everything that I'm doing here today is because someone took the time to explain it to me and I just kept building upon that. So um, anyways, like I said, you guys got something that you like to try different with yours and you want to share it, I'd love to know about it. Anyways, so there we go. So we got some nice fillets. Now they're all going to go in this bag. And I'm just basically, this is such a wonderful idea using the, the bag. Um, I, 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 I like it. It's kind of, you know, the old uh, shake and bake back in the, in the day of, of uh, now I'm aging myself, but that's easy to do. <laughs> uh, you know, you put it all in the bag there, easy. zip them up, easy, easy clean up. Oh yeah. Again, over the sink, cause don't, don't make, a make the wife mad at me for making a mess. So, all right. Let's get it all coated and happy in there. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh yeah. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of a roller coaster ride many years back. Okay, so there's that. All right, so now we got these nice and coated. I'm gonna leave those there and I'm gonna take the dry that's in this bowl and I'm gonna start adding my wet to it. So, in my opinion, any good batter is got it's got to have beer in it if you don't have beer in it man i just you know i've had batters where there's no beer in it and it's just sad i think i think it's a sin but anyways so use whatever beer you like whatever beer you have and you like to drink that's the beer you put in it just happens to be, I like Mickey's Big Mouth. These, uh, you know, this kind of takes me back when I was in high school. Uh, oh, yeah, well, I guess- Again, we that age thing. Well, I, I don't know if we should be drinking it in high school, but <laughs> none of us really did that, right? Yeah, no, I don't think, I, well, I'm just gonna stop with that. <laughs> Anyways, so Mickey's Big Mouth, I like the flavor, uh, and it works great, plus the Big Mouth, you know, it kind of goes with, well, yeah. I don't need to tell you guys. You know. Okay, so let's just dump that in. I just kind of go around and around. There we go. Oh, the fizzing. So that's a whole bottle, right? It's a whole bottle. You got that right. Just like what I would be normally drinking for myself. Uh, anyways, so we put that in. This foaming thing. This is what is where the magic is happening. All those bubbles and all that stuff is aerating that flour and that is what's gonna make a really nice batter. It's just gonna be nice and airy and crunchy and light and all the happy, wonderful things in life. Three egg whites. Okay, now here's the deal on the egg whites. When I first started doing deep fry, when I would make up the batter, I was using whole eggs. It's what I was taught, it's what I did, tasted just fine. But it never really had that super crunch on the outside. I wanted, I wanted that batter when it was on that fish and fried, I wanted it to be like, you know, a Lay's potato chip. I wanted, I wanted that crunch. 
And I just couldn't, it couldn't, for what it's life of me, I couldn't get it to make that happen. And then I found out. I watched a few videos and stuff. Like I said, we learned on people actually like making peanut brittle and stuff. And they were using egg whites because it allowed it to be crunchier. And I thought to myself, you know, the dome lit up. And I thought, well, what if I just use egg whites in it? And I tried it. Oh, holy crap. That was, that, that made a world of difference. So if you guys are trying or you're doing with egg, uh, uh, a full egg, try adding maybe instead of a one egg, do a couple eggs or three eggs, but just do the whites. See if it works for you. So in three egg whites go. All right. So there's that. Okay. Now I got our whisk. Well, let's give this just a little whisk up. Okay. Now, I know that it all has a little lumpiness in there because, you know, it's, it, it, some are going to go, well, you should sift it first. And I, I, You know, I'm just one of those guys. I throw all the shit in one thing and let's just roll with it. So I'll just sit here, beat this up for a little bit. And uh, before you know it, it all kind of smooths right out. So that's what I'm going to do. So... Anyways, this is going to take just a few seconds, maybe a little bit longer. If you want to go grab a cold one, I know that beer that I just dumped in here made some of you thirsty. So I know it did me. I might have to go grab one here in a minute. Anyways, so we'll give this, see, look at that. It's already getting pretty. It's kind of getting a nice little consistency. And you know, listen, if you got a few of these little tiny little white bumpy things in here, don't worry about that. There's nothing wrong with that. Your fish is going to get coated. If it gets a little bit of that, it's going to fry it. It actually will kind of, even in some ways, just kind of make the batter like a little fluffier on the, on the, on the fish. So it's all good. It's all good. Nothing here bad. All right, run around the bowl. All right, okay, that goes in there. Let's bring this back. All right, now we're just about ready to rock and roll. Okay, so here's the next dry ingredient, and that is panko. If you don't know what panko is, Japanese breadcrumbs. Yum! This is for me. The deep frying, the only way to go, or even just any kind of frying. I love panko. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I think a little bit more. We'll just, just a dab bit more. Oh, that's about a half a box. One of those boxes. Yeah, yeah, because this thing was almost full, and that's one full box of uh, panko. So. So about. So about maybe yeah, about a half a yeah half a box or three quarters of a box. You know. Right, we got a big budget here. All right. So here we go with this. Roll this over here. Okay. Now let's start dipping. Oh, I'm getting excited. All right, so I like to just bounce off a little bit of the, any of the extra flour. I don't want a whole lot on there and I just lay them in. I do about three or four at a time and just lay them in. You know, they got to do a little swimming in here. It's like a, maybe more like a hot tub thing, cold tub thing. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. All right, so there's that. Now, so Dry ingredients on right hand for me, wet stuff on the left. That way I don't come up with a big old gooey monster. All right, so now I make these swim around a little bit. Oh, look at how happy they're getting. They're getting drunk. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. I'm telling you right now. Okay, so this, we're gonna put it right in there. Oh, shake, shake, shake. Shake, 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 oh no, that's, if you guys are way too young to know what that is, you're going to have to ask your parents what shake, shake, shake means. It has to do with something with a KC or something like that. And some a band. <laughs> All right. All my friends know what shake, shake, shake is. All right. Well, last one going in the shake, shake, shake. So there we go. Get that all nicely coated up. Oh, look how pretty that is. Yep, okay, that's it. All right, all right, video expertise woman, come on over here and 
take a shot of that guys isn't that pretty oh, yeah. so now we're gonna get the oil going and those puppies are gonna take a nice hot bath so we'll be at it here in a minute hey guys so yeah we're uh, we're getting ready here we're at about uh, 300 degrees I like to put the fish in yeah right around 330 and uh, let it cook up for about five six minutes that's all it should take and uh, have some really great fried fish afterwards. So, getting really close here. We're at uh, we're at the tenth now, and uh, fish is going in. It's right at 330 degrees. Beautiful. Get a nice shot of that. That's pretty much what you want to see. So now we'll give this about five six minutes and. We should have some nice golden fish here pretty quick. Uh, and I just want to take this opportunity. I know most of you um, have somebody in your life that, uh, you know, kind of uh, helped you along the way, whatever it might be that you uh, do, either be fishing or hunting or whatever your passion is. Mine was my dad. And uh, it was, uh, I, I really do miss not being able to fish with him. Um, but uh, I got started fishing off the rocks out at Stinson Beach here in California. I was probably about 10 or 11 years old and it was the greatest thing fishing with my dad. And uh, you know at about 13 uh, was the first time he took me on a charter boat. And I really fell in love with the ocean at that point. That was everything to me. So um, anyways, I don't want to get too deep. I guess maybe I did already, but just wanted to, you know, say how much I really appreciate my father uh, for taking the time and uh, doing what on the side drain a little bit turn this stuff off right, those are beautiful mm -hmm. right. I'm here and get them hey guys so here's the final product uh, we have some beautiful beautiful rockfish all nice deep fried up a little bit of green onion sprinkled on top with some lemon wedges. Uh, two cocktail, uh, the one cocktail sauce that we have come across that we really like, and uh, this is about the only one that um, we carry uh, here at the house now is this seafood so seafood sauce by uh, Lee uh, Lee Roy's, I believe is the name. Great seafood sauce, and then uh, for tartar sauce, this beaver tartar sauce, fantastic. Um, I would imagine this is probably at any grocery store. This we have to get online actually. So if you guys want more information on either one of these dipping sauces, you can just send me a, a message about it and I'll get that info to you guys. Anyways, we want to do a little crunch here for you. So come in with the cam, come in with the video. <laughs> so here's what we've got here. I got to put a little sprinkle of this on here. Oh yeah, just a little drizzle. You could add a little more salt to this if you wanted to, and you'd add the salt uh, right as it comes out of the hot oil. Um, but I season mine pretty well. It really doesn't need it. So listen to the crunch. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Thank you, God. Mmm. Oh, you guys. Oh, wow, very hot. <laughs> but, wow. Oh, oh that is so good. That. Anyways. It has been such a wonderful pleasure having you guys with me throughout this um, cooking adventure and um, look forward to having you with me on the next one. Hopefully in about a week or so, we'll have another one coming out. Anyways, to all of you, God bless and your families. Take care.